I recently received a radio that had been water damaged inside and um, came up with an idea to increase the water resistance of my radio when I'm in the field, especially this time of year with spring coming up and wet snow, isothermal conditions around radios in the pockets of Gore-Tex jackets where they never should be at any time. And I uh, thought I'd share this idea. So with these radios you've got this gasket which you'll see ceiling around it and um, we're going to go through and just improve some of the interfaces where water can uh, ingress into the radio. And while I'm at it I'm going to sidetrack a bit. You're probably like me and you probably have a bunch of radioactive tritium vials sitting around your house from your days at Fukushima and uh, with your wife is probably bugging you, uh, Billy Bob, what are you going to do with all those radioactive vials there? Could you please get rid of them? Well, that happens to me all the time, just like you, and I thought that um, maybe I could use that in my radio, so I'm going to stick a tritium vial into the display of my radio. I did that with the Wushan, made it really easy to find it in the pack at night, and um, it helps uh, if you need to get a date, you look pretty cool. So the materials that you're going to need for this will be um, a sponge applicator and if you don't have a sponge applicator handy go and get an old pair of pantyhose and cut some little squares out wrap them over a q-tip and then just tape it and now you've got a sponge applicator. If you use a q-tip to applicate you're going to end up with little particles of uh, cotton that you'll have to pick out. Uh, some of the other materials, I'm going to use some fluid film. I couldn't find my silicone thread sealant that we use on headlamps, which would probably be what I'd prefer, but um, next time I take this apart, I'll probably just do it again and use that. Uh, so this is what the fluid film looks like that I'll be using, and um, I'm sticking it into a little applicator like that so I can squeeze it on a little handier and then applicate it with my sponge tip and for my little side project of putting that tritium vial in I'm going to use this is the UV curing glue that you fix your windshield with it dries crystal clear and doesn't cloud over when you use it to cement things like a two-part epoxy what the epoxy cracks and turns yellow and uh, deteriorates with time so this is the preferred stuff you cure it with uh, UV, which is good when you've got strong sunlight. If not, those little drying ovens that uh, are used when you put your nail polish on, the glitter stuff, that'll work as well. So we'll get started with taking the radio apart. And for this, we're using the Anytone 3318. And for the tools, you're going to need a Torx screwdriver, and you're going to need a very small... Phillips, not sure if that's a double lot or a triple lot, and I'm not sure what the caliber of that Torx is, so you'll have to figure that out on your own, maybe an ought. Four screws that you have to undo on the corners. And um, you will also be taking the dials or the knobs off the top. So when you have the screws out, put them somewhere where you won't lose them, unlike me. But I never clean the floor, so I always know where to find them when I lose them. As you can tell, she who must be obeyed isn't around to observe my narration. She doesn't appreciate it. Screws are out. Now the knobs come off. I've already got that silicone grease on my hands. You're probably a lot stronger than me. You won't have trouble pulling those knobs off. As you can see, there are a couple of silicone gaskets under those knobs as well 
and there's one surrounding the antenna base. So the next part is going to be pulling this uh, case back up and out and out of the radio now that we've got it all free. So you can get some kind of a sharp object in the sides here and use it to gently lift up on the case. You want to do this nice and gentle so you don't wreck anything. And um, gently pry the case out like this. Be careful, the speaker is attached to the radio with the speaker wires, so don't pull too hard and detach them. Make a note of your silicone seals on the dials so that uh, in case they fall off and your keypad may fall out as well. Put all that off to the side where you can get it. And here you can see your silicone gasket, which is what we're going to be treating, will come out of the channel that it seats in and you will have to reseat that. So now we have the radio apart and there's one other rubber seal that may or may not fall out that you need to be aware of and that is this panel over your programming and mic input which is under the mic and speaker mic tab there. Those are all the things to be aware of. Here's me putting this tritium vial into the display of the radio. Then I'm going to dip the vial in it. And then I will place the vial in the display. I'm not in the display. In the display window. Position it. And now I'm going to carefully take it outside and put it in direct sunlight for about 15 minutes and let it cement itself in there. So while the other radio was out in the sun getting cured with the tritium vial in the display, I fortunately have the luxury of having another parts radio here that is uh, about a year old and um, I'll get started with demonstrating how this gasket works on body panel. You can see there's a channel that it fits in <clears throat> and actually when you squeeze this back into the body it does go a lot better when it's got some lubrication on it. There's various ways to skin the cat. You may have some good suggestions to improve this method. This is only the second time I've done it but this is what I'm doing so far and probably can improve it as we go along. So I've taken my fluid film and put it into this squeeze bottle and take my applicator and I'll just put some drops on it's more than a drop and then spread it along. Now the fluid film res helps resist corrosion and it displaces water. It doesn't seem to be conductive but um, Nonetheless, I do want to keep it off the circuit board. I wouldn't want it shorting a couple of contact points. So, don't get too carried away with giving your radio a bath in it. But put it around all the orange parts that you find. You could also put it right on your applicator tip. Oops. Now you can see why I do all this when she who must be obeyed isn't around, especially on the dining room table. Oh, excuse me, in my used Hollywood studio that I bought. So look at the spots. Where do we have the possibilities for moisture ingress? Around the top dials, around the case cavity, and through the keypad.
and maybe even the display. I don't think there's a lot I can do through the window there because I don't want to muck up how transparent it is. I think that with the keypad, I was thinking an idea might be to give it a little spray coat of the fluid film. And so I'll just give that a bit of a And then I'll set that off to the side. In fact, this is one way to tell the difference between version 1 of the Anytone 3318 and version 2. The version 2 keypad looks like that. Fluid film is simply what I had around. I probably would have used a silicone sealant, that, uh, thread sealant that we used on headlamps if I could have found it. Uh, you may have your own ideas or your own material that you'd prefer to use. Just use something that won't eat your silicone seals or your membrane or the paint off and then go from there. I'm going to go retrieve the other radio now and uh, see how we're going with the tritium vial getting seated. So we're back with the original radio and a couple of other points that I forgot to mention to uh, get the treatment on which would be perhaps it would be a good idea to do the inside of the case where the keypad meets through the grid and the recesses although you can spray that from the outside again. Uh, the other one is to do this rubber gasket that is in the speaker mic cavity. And uh, when my son wandered in, scared me, I thought she who must be a bay was going to catch me. He uh, pointed out something that I forgot to mention. What are you doing to your warranty when you take the radio apart? Well, the fact of the matter is with these Chinese radios, have a look at the warranty you get from the dealer because in all likelihood, it's going to be a 24-hour uh, dead-on-arrival guarantee. And then after that, it's probably going to fall back to the manufacturer's warranty. If your radio has to go back to China, that probably just won't happen anyway. And doing this will in all likelihood make it less likely that you would need to try and invoke a warranty which would not be honored due to moisture damage anyhow. So I would say don't worry about the warranty unless your dealer has told you otherwise. So now I have to start putting all this back together and uh, I will. I see the version 2 keypad <laughs> just drops in nice and easily. Uh, it was a lot easier than the keypad in version 1. I'm going to have to get this silicone gasket realigned into all the channels. And uh, maybe what I'll do is just fast forward if this takes a long time. and look through these holes right here and you should be able to see it there and slowly move it pushing down and in and with any luck it will slide back into place and 
you're going to have you can see here where my keypad is pinched and if I can't get that to pop back into luckily that has popped in so before you apply a lot of pressure check your keypad make sure that they've all seated again properly and give them a tactile test to make sure none of them are pinched you should feel and hear that tactile clicking sound now you can seat it all back and have a look in here and look at all your seals to make sure that they're all in place check all around the edges of where the case went in with uh, where it interfaces with the plastic with the metal and if you can see any orange from your gasket that's visible it probably means it slipped and it's pinched between the plastic and the metal when you're satisfied that everything is back in place and aligned properly before you put all your screws back in you may want to just run a quick check and make sure that everything is working because if it's not and you have to take things apart again it's easier if you do that before you put the screws in you don't even need to put that top panel on you can just seat the battery there and hold it with pressure and try your function 9 key Unfortunately, my battery went dead before I got a chance to finish off with some of my best jokes, which I guess you'll have to miss. And some final comments about the placement of these tritiums that um, help illuminate your radio so you can find it at night in your pack or perhaps when you're in your tent and it's buried under other gear and something happens and you need to find your radio to go render assistance or get some assistance for yourself. There's a couple of alternative locations that you could put your trit and actually there's only one. Now if you look at this grill it would look really nice to place them into those lower four sections. However, if you look closely they are open so that you can hear the speaker output and the microphone is on that hole there. So if you're going to fill the reservoir with the UV glue then you don't want to be sealing your grill for your speaker. That only leaves the top one which is not open so you could stick a trit in there and fill that up with the UV glue. Now that size might be a little too big because it does protrude above the grill surface and it could get knocked and broken which means you might have to revert to one of these smaller guys or put a couple of the smaller guys in there side by side. Static is keeping it on there. You could put two or three of them in there and place them and those would be protected nicely when the glue seals. That's probably your best option. If you were very sparse with your glue so that you didn't block the holes you could get these larger trits into those grill holes if you just had a small amount. I don't really like leaving the tube with protrusions that can be nicked by something and grabbed and then the tube will just break. Apparently there's not enough radiation in any of these to be harmful even when they do break 
and that's why they can sell them and use them in watches such as this watch for example I don't know if you can see that but these marathon watches which I don't really recommend you can see they use the tritium vials as well and those were I think they're only they used to be only available for military or peace officers uh, when I got that watch I had to prove and show documentation as to what I was doing for a living at the time and then they allowed me to buy one I'm sure they wouldn't turn business away I don't really recommend these though I don't uh, this one hasn't been that durable it fogs up I'm getting off on a tangent as I usually do she who must not be obeyed usually keeps me online when she's around that's why I do these when I'm on my own if I think of anything else I missed I'll post it down below and thanks for your patience and if you did fall asleep it is time to wake up now